On one evening in 2016, two Danish amateur archaeologists were out for a walk. Liz Thurkelson and Ernst Christensen also had a metal detector with them as they went, and as they crossed the field, that detector started giving a signal. So Thurkelson and Christensen dug about 12 inches into the ground until part of a metal object appeared, and when they later found out what they had discovered, they may have been astonished. Metal detecting has become an increasingly popular hobby over the years, with its exponents ranging from serious amateurs like Thurkelson and Christensen through to hobbyists hoping to find a buried treasure trove. Most of the time, though, detectorists are more likely to turn up ring pulls or other trash than any gold. Indeed, one longtime detectorist with 40 years' experience, Englishman Steve Critchley, told The Independent in 2017, There are those who think it's a way to make some easy money. I tell them they're better off putting money on the lottery. The odds are much better than expecting to find something valuable while metal detecting. So on the day of their find, Thurkelson and Christensen may not have been expecting to dig up anything useful. The duo were exploring a field near a town called Zvebel on Denmark's biggest island, Zealand. Denmark's lively capital, Copenhagen, is also located on Zealand and lies about 60 miles east of Zvebel. Then after their metal detector indicated a find, Thurkelson and Christensen dug down to a depth of around one foot, and after their excavation, they exposed the tip of what looked like a blade. Perhaps because the pair were conscientious amateur archaeologists rather than simple treasure hunters, though, they now did something that may seem counterintuitive. You see, Thurkelson and Christensen chose to rebury the item, and that was a smart move. After all, disturbing an archaeological artifact may mean that valuable information about its origin is lost forever. Then the following morning, the Danish detectorist contacted the Museum Vestigald, a partnership of several local museums in Zealand. And the day after the couple had made their discovery, they took the museum's Arne Hedgard Andersen to the location of their find. When the two had first uncovered their artifact, they thought they may have been looking at the point of a sword. Helped by Andersen, Thurkelson and Christensen now unveiled their object, and what they found was stunning. The item was indeed a sword and a very much unspoiled one at that. The two amateurs had pretty much hit the archaeological jackpot, it seemed. A press release from the museum later revealed further details about the artifact, saying, The sword is so well preserved that you can clearly see the fine details, and it's even sharp. Now the museum went to work on finding out the era to which the item could be dated, and the answer was astonishing. Given that the sword was found in Denmark, one of the countries in which the legendary Vikings had thrived, you may well assume that the blade had once belonged to a Viking warrior. Perhaps it had even been in the possession of an important chieftain in the area. But such guesses would be wrong. That's because the origin of this formidable weapon long predated the time of the Vikings, whose heyday was between the 8th and 11th centuries. Yes, this sword was much older than that. In fact, the museum determined it belonged to the Nordic Bronze Age, so from about 1500 BC to 500 BC. However, the institution was able to be more precise than even that, as its experts reckoned that the fine sword came from known as what's Phase 4 of the Nordic Bronze Age. That narrows down the period that the relic came from to the two centuries between 1100 BC and 900 BC. Therefore, the extraordinary sword was constructed around 3000 years ago. It's all the more incredible then that it survived in such good condition. And while there are no written records from the latter part of the prehistoric Nordic Bronze Age, other artifacts from that period do still exist. So although we know little of the people of Denmark back then, we can learn something of them from objects that have been discovered over the years and from excavations at various sites. It seems, for example, that during the Nordic Bronze Age, individuals lived in small settlements based around farms. There appear to have been no larger settlements, not even on the scale of the villages. Many of the Nordic Bronze Age settlements were also near the ocean, and this links them somewhat to the Vikings, who were famous for their seafaring feats. The people of this era are additionally thought to have grown grain crops such as wheat and millet and kept animals such as pigs, sheep, and cattle. Without any written records, though, we can only guess at the religious or spiritual beliefs the people who made Thurkelson and Christensen sword may have had. But thanks to discoveries such as rock carvings, it's thought that worship of the sun may have been practiced. 
and we also know that Nordic Bronze Age dwellers buried their dead in elaborate graves. As for Thurkildsen and Christensen's find, well, it comes in at about 32 inches long, with the blade itself constituting 26 inches of that total. But while the sword itself is generally in good shape, the grip is nevertheless missing. This section of the artifact is presumably rotted away, as it was probably constructed from wood or bone. But the Danish Detectress sword isn't the only Nordic Bronze Age weapon of its kind to have been excavated. In 1897, for example, the so-called Vreda Kloster sword was discovered in an area of Sweden. And while the Swedish relic is said to be considerably older than its Danish counterpart, dating back from 1600 BC to 1500 BC, it has a blade markedly shorter than the Svebel sword, just 18 inches. However, perhaps the most stunning Nordic Bronze Age find in Denmark is the Trundholm Sun Chariot. The 14-inch high sculpture, which shows a horse mounted on wheels pulling a bronze disc, is considered to date to 1400 BC and was revealed in a Zealand peat bog in 1902. Experts believe that the small statue may depict a conviction that the sun was pulled across the sky. When it comes to Thurkeldsen and Christensen's sword, though, the ancient weapon has had only one brief public outing. It was displayed for just one afternoon in September 2016 at the Kullenborg Museum, part of the Museum Vestalen Group, and the lucky amateur archaeologists were on hand to answer questions about the item. Truly, the find of a lifetime. Check out these other videos from Let Me Know. If you haven't made the move to subscribe to our channel, all you need to do is click on that red subscribe button. Thank you for watching.